You're one tech away. That's it. One tech away. Is this it? Bam. Future tech. We did it. Let's take a look at that tech tree. <laughs> We've done it. We finished the tech tree on turn 47. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, what I love about this is that I did it while sitting back sipping tea. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today I'm playing Sid Meier's Civilization VI again with a brand new released update. It's uh, it's added heroes, it's added mythological units, and all that fun stuff. But most importantly, it's added new city states and it's added exploits. Now, um, when it comes to today's video, we have a little Little bit of a special guest. We have Mr. Potato McWhiskey. Please say hello. Hey, buddies. Potato McWhiskey here. Oh, there you go. What a flawless intro. Now, Potato, as many of you know, is an absolute blessing on this lovely world in the fact that he also plays a metric ton of Civilization VI, makes the developers cry just as much as I do, but more importantly, he cyberbullies the developers into improving all of the forgotten parts of this game. So thank you very much, Potato. Uh, you know what? I take full credit for Andy and all balance changes to the game. I mean, they are basically all sorted by you because I just break them. You break them and then go, and here's how you could actually get it to function in the way you intended, which is very nice. You actually consider about the consequences of your actions. Um, only some of the time. Usually that actually happens afterwards. I just kind of do and then I think about it. Ah, you see, I just don't ever think. There's, there's no stopping because as soon as I stop and think about what I've done, Potato, I think that's when my career ends. Now, in today's episode, we'll be using a very broken city state as well as also the very broken brand new civilization of Babylon, which, as of course I mentioned, isn't fair at all. Are you tired of not immediately finishing every single game of Civ 6? How would you like to generate 86,627 science in one single turn? That's right, that is exactly enough science to instantly finish the entire Civ 6 tech tree in one turn, and we're going to be pulling it off. So how on earth are two majestic sausages like myself and Potato going to break the game so that we can generate 86,000 science in one turn. Well, strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be an exciting exploit. Right, so I'm in the game. I've got my lovely Eagle Warrior. I've got my set there. I'm just going to settle on the first tile. Potato, I'm sure you'd say that the tile I'm settling on isn't right. It's right on the coastline. It's just got bananas and two wheat. So you'd evidently go on a voyage with this settler, but I'm a lazy sausage because we're going to win the game. So it doesn't make much of a difference. And I'm just going to go south and I should have gone south. There's like free mercury deposits right here. This is insane. Yep, you made a big mistake. You could have settled on that mercury and just been rolling in that poisonous material. Should I, should I focus on getting a builder first? I think a build is exactly what I need. I'm just going to get a scout because I want to find more information about the world. I've discovered a city-state. I've discovered the perfect city-state. We've done it, Potato. This is the map. We don't need to restart. I have immediately discovered the city-state of Nalanda. Now, why is Nalanda special, Potato? Nalanda is special because they give you access to a unique improvement called the <coughs> Mahavihara. I'm afraid you pronounced that incorrectly. So legally, I'm afraid you now must be killed, um, Potato, because on my channel, we always pronounce things perfectly. So um, this is the end for you, Potato, I'm afraid. Oh dear, should I like report to my local processing center for yeah. liquidation? So yeah, Nalanda is a special city-state because it gives us a building which gives us one free random tech. And as you can imagine, one free random tech, not that insane. If it's just one tech, that does. That, would you say that's game-breaking? Just one tech potato? Uh, no, I would say it's like a decent bonus. Like, it's pretty good. Yeah, I'd say it's no Fez, though. I'd say Fez is probably better, because if you're playing a religious game, you're going to be getting more than one free tech from Fez. I actually found a relic on my very first uh, tribal village, though. This is already off to a great start. We found a Lambda. Yeah. I have a relic. I think I'm going to go for a monument. I have Beowulf, who is a pretty strong hero, because he can instantaneously delete any unit that has a lower combat strength than him if they're next oh to him. God, that sounds like an insane hero to have. I don't have any heroes. Now, I have unlocked my um, my first envoy, who I can send over to the city-state to myself, uh, which is exactly what I'll do. I'll send over my one little envoy, which gives me plus one sign to my capital. Thank you, Nalanda. But sadly, that's still not enough to win the game. However, we are getting close. 16 turns until I get early empire, and then I've won the game. I don't know. You, you sound a little bit sure of yourself. Are you sure you can win the game in 16 turns? I don't think I can win the game in 16 turns. I think I can just 
press the uh, press the right buttons to be in the place that I have won the game, and uh, the AI doesn't stand a chance. I like the sound of this. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Right, I've now unlocked my governor, and this is where the game finishes, because uh, naturally, for my first governor, this is what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to pick Amani here, because Amani is a messenger. That's her innate ability. She acts as two envoys in a city-state. Now, when you're three envoys in a city-state, you become their suzerain, and you get their special bonus. In the lander's case, it means we get to build the building that gives us one free random tech. So if we put our lovely envoy in here, then in five turns time, we become the suzerain of this lovely little city state. So we pop her in and in a few turns time, we will get its lovely bonus. And this is all because we've already sent one envoy there. You don't want to send more than one envoy. If you send more, you busted it. Right now we've hit the turn where I can do it. This is it. This is the end of the game, Potato. So the reason why we had Potato pick the fantastic civilization that is Babylon is because whenever Babylon receives a tech bonus, they can basically get the tech for free. Um, and can you do that twice per turn, or can you do that as many times as you like in a turn? Uh, it's actually infinite. Infinite. That's lovely. So provided uh, Potato gets a tech boost, he instantly researches the technology. Now, this is interesting because, as we mentioned, if one of us researches the technology, the other receives a tech boost for that very same technology. So instead of having to do a complicated mission tree of trying to kill a barbarian unit with, say, a slinger to unlock how to make a bow and arrow for some unknown reason, Potato is going to be able to get all of this technology provided I research it first. So how am I going to research it before him? Well, I'm going to build this very unique improvement from the lander. It's called the thing that Potato said earlier, and it gives us one free random technology. So I build it down, we get a free technology, we discovered horseback riding, yay! But sadly, we only get to build one of those improvements and my build is now gone. Luckily, I can just move my envoy around. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go into the lovely governor section, reassign Amani to my capital city, and then that means we immediately lose the suzerain bonus of Nalanda. However, if we go back to the governors, reassign her to Nalanda, because the turn hasn't ended, she hasn't moved, suddenly we've discovered a brand new hero for some reason. We've discovered Ananasi. I don't know how that's happened. And we also discovered a brand new tech. We've just discovered the wheel. And what we're going to do is now give uh, me Carpal Tunnel. I can see why Potato selected not to play as the Aztecs today, because um, now my fingers are going to die as we've just discovered pottery. And now I go back to my capital. Now I move Amani over to the city state again. And there we go, that's bronze working. Now I have to do this, um, Potato, can you calculate how many times I have to click reassign, bearing in mind I'm pressing it twice per time? Uh, I think there's like a 140 texts. So you're gonna do that about 280 times. Okay, 280 clicks. Um, oh my god, my fingers. Right, so there we go. We've got engineering. Um, now we go again. And that is celestial navigation. There we go. In 2160 BC. Um, I think that means we've beaten the Vikings on that one. Machinery. There we go. We've discovered crossbowmen. And I'd like to just say, I'm kind of just sitting back watching my tech tree fill up as Fifth does all the work. Yes, because every time I pick a tech, normally, if I was playing with any of our ally, this would do nothing for them other than give them a tech boost for every tech in the game. However, Potato is able to gain every single technology here. So, because Potato is able to do that, both of us are trying to gain the hero Hercules so that we can immediately build a spaceport as early as possible. Because technically, we don't really have the production to try and pull off a space victory. However, if Hercules just effectively magics a spaceport into existence, the game's basically over. And there's uh, Siege Tactics. I've discovered Hercules. There we go. Good stuff. So I'll be able to pick him up soon. Yeah, my question is if we like keep researching technology far beyond the, the tech tree, will we just ascend into like conscious beings and no longer require to play the game? Yes, we'll ascend into a being which is so truly incredible and so intelligent, they could probably write jokes for Rick and Morty. <laughs> You know, I, I often feel really dumb when I watch that show because a lot of the jokes go over my head. Always go over my head. I always struggle with them. Like, he turned himself into a pickle. I just can't see how someone could turn themselves into a pickle. Now, we've discovered uh, oh. nuclear fusion. Yeah, and I have uh, two copies of uranium. Have you? You've got some uranium in your lands. That's nice. Yeah, I'm tempted. I'm tempted to settle it. That's a good idea. It's always good to settle uranium in 2000 BC. Now, we've just discovered cyber uh, cybernetics, famously something the Aztecs did in 2000 BC. Uh, they were very ahead of their time, very smart. I actually believe that um, the Gundam anime was based off the Aztec giant Death it robot was diagram. based, and there we go, there we go. The Aztecs have just discovered the giant death robot. That's that's what happened. What came first, the Aztecs or the anime? Turns out, it's always the Aztecs. You're one tech away. That's it. One tech away. Is this it? Bam! Future tech. We did it. Let's take a look at that tech tree. <laughs>
We've done it. We finished the tech tree on turn 47. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, what I love about this is that I did it while sitting back sipping tea. Right. What I've decided to do is I've decided I'm going to get Hercules um, in three turns. Uh, I'm sure you can appreciate my decision making there. Yeah, it's a good decision. I mean, he'll instantaneously print you a spaceport. Right. Now I've got my second city down and also Hercules is out and about. So Hercules is bonus. Um, is Hercules labor. Use when located on a friendly district under construction. Hercules immediately completes construction of the district and it costs two charges. He's got six charges, ladies and gentlemen. So as you can guess, the perfect man for the job. So my city is going to start building. There we go. We're going to start building the spaceport. It's going to take 180 turns. I'm going to put Hercules on top of it. Press Hercules labor and the spaceport has been finished in 2040 BC. There we go. That's what you like to see. Bam, ladies and gentlemen, I've jumped into the video here to tell you the greatest exploit of all time. That's right, the most powerful exploit that has ever been discovered. Are you ready for it? Fun fact, ladies and gentlemen, if you like this video, this video will not only potentially be the first ever video to appear on the YouTube trending page that is Civilization 6, it might also be the greatest video on YouTube. That's right. If every single person watching this did like the video, it would kind of accidentally break the internet and remind people who play Fortnite that there are another genre of video games that exist, so you know what to do. Go exploit the internet. Anyway, back into the video. We've got a game to break. Right, so um, in my capital city, I guess I launched the Earth satellite. Gonna take 86, uh, 86 turns. I feel like I need a bit of production up and running before then. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to make some money and like print you gold so you can you can rush that down. You could just use Hercules to build spaceport. And since you're so far ahead in the tech tree, I think chopping a forest produces like 200 production. You just settle in a forest, buy a builder and chop out a spaceport project in like two turns. Ah, that might actually be a very smart idea. All right, here we go. Here's my builder, my first builder up and running. I uh, can immediately build solar panels everywhere. I'm gonna send the builder to chop down the woods just to see how much we get from chopping down this wood. And I guess I could build maybe something to give me production, like um, an industrial zone maybe? Do you, do you think an industrial zone would be a good addition to my empire? Oh, it definitely could be, especially if you plopped it like right beside that coal. Yeah, I don't have the money to pop it in the plus two spot though. Oh, hang on, I'll send you a bit of cash because what is a friend for? Oh, thank you. I need about 200 gold. What? How do you... Oh, yeah. oh, right. Things are really expensive. Yeah, it costs 250 to buy that single tile there. Um, I have 138, so there you go. Oh, thank you very much. What a lovely gift. Now, I apparently I'm going into a golden era. Are you also going into a golden era? Yeah, I think it has to do with researching the entire tech tree on a single turn. Might have something to do with it. Right, to build a seastead or to build a offshore wind farm. <laughs> Let's get a seastead. Let's get more population in here. Oh my goodness, this is dumb. I think the word you're looking for is beautifully dumb. Wait, I forgot I can buy I can buy garbage with faith now. Why aren't I just buying settlers and builders? 85 faith! Who needs to spend time on builders when you can just dump them out into the world? Oh, this is it. This is it. What a combo. Right now, I think it's time to get my um, uh, industrial zone built. So I'll quickly change production over to a industrial zone right here and then of course have Hercules do his jam. Come on stand on here Hercules and skaboosh and it's perfect. I'm gonna get my second spaceport down. I'm gonna get Hercules to do his magic on it next turn. I've got my second spaceport up. Oh I have spec ops. I can actually parachute. Do you mind if I declare war on Japan? Yeah by all means paradrop troops into Japan. I mean they're so far away from me they can't actually get an army over to me. Oh that means I discovered the other person in the game. Um are dropping troops into Japan now. I can one-shot their city with my scout unit. Um, now, of course, it is 925 BC, so um, any historians amongst you in the audience would say that the um, very famous Babylonian power drop into central Japan didn't happen in 925 BC, and in fact, maybe historically never happened. Uh, you, of course, would be wrong, because this is very clearly happening in front of us. Exactly, like, we have all the proof. It's kind of like the people who don't believe the Earth is flat. It's like, how much do I have to show you before you just, like... I've yeah. shown you like 700 pictures of the earth being flat and you said they're all false so evidently you just don't believe okay that's the that's the fault of them not us oh no i just realized that this spec ops trooper is costing me seven gold per turn which is my <laughs> entire economy <laughs> So Hercules has died, I think, or he's run out or something. Your hero departed. Um, so can I just get a new hero now? Uh, you can re-recruit Hercules and he comes back with all his charges. Perfect. 
It does cost a thousand faith. He's a bit like the Energizer Bunny. You have to recharge him. And there you have it. The uh, special forces have taken Fukuoka. I'm getting 245 faith for a single pillage with my special forces. Oh, I forces, saw that. Which... 245 faith. <laughs> it's only on in the game. That's enough to straight up buy um, the Great Prophet for me. I have a military of zero, right? And the easiest way for me to actually get a military is not to spend a million turns building a modern AT, but instead to summon a hero to fight for me. And I need to find the strongest hero. Oh, I think Beowulf would be your uh, your best bet because he can just delete units. Yeah, he can actually. I'll just quickly pick him. Perfect. Right, so I'll have him in 10 turns uh, and he's going to save my kingdom from the overwhelming quantity of barbarians running around. Ah, uh, right. It would appear Japan has almost fallen now. Is that is that Japan gone? That is Japan gone. Wow. We've done it. <laughs> We're going for the fastest world conquest this game has ever seen. Really? I just need more money to fuel my two, two units. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not attacking your cities because I want them, but rather I need a way to fund my army. All right, I'm going to launch that Earth satellite. Let's go. All right, time for me to make my religion. Oh, we got a uh, we got a crab. Um, we're going to call it Carpal Tunnel. Actually, no, we'll go for the more plain, simple RSI. What should we go for? Relics uh, give additional triple faith and tourism. That seems perfect. So I'm noticing we are at war with the uh, entire world now. Do you feel confident to take on the entire world with your two military units? I'm very confident in of myself. My units, however, I don't know if I have full confidence in them. No, no, I mean, it is quite difficult. Um, I mean, they are only massively, I mean, that is a spec ops man fighting a barbarian warrior, effectively. Uh, and sadly, it would appear the warrior has lost. Right, I've just used the Beowulf ability to remove a unit from existence. I, I can see why you like it. It's, it's incredible for defense. There's been a couple of times when I was uh, playing against the AI and Beowulf comes out of the fog of war and just deletes a crossbowman on me. <laughs> so, oh, you thought you were confident in your military abilities. Well, what if your army just disappeared? I found myself in a weird situation where everything is so expensive that I'm actually better off just pillaging the AI and then leaving and waiting for them to rebuild to get more resources. Yes, than actually like destroying their cities, yeah. Do you get gold for pillaging as well? How much are you getting for that? I think I get like 400 gold for pillaging these mines. Very nice. I mean, that's four mines and you can buy yourself another spec ops it's practically it's like it's like mining bitcoin except i'm pillaging exactly and just like mining bitcoin you all should be doing it as well so i'm noticing you've got 2000 faith there so um are you planning to spend that on anything i was thinking of buying my hero back when uh when he dies i know that is always a solid chart but you do also have 2000 then additional faith to use on whatever the heck you like <laughs> I feel like you could get some artillery, slap a drone onto it. You've got near infinite range. Oh, Japan had another city. They thought they were hiding down here. Yeah, I think they must have had a settler because they disappeared from the tab and they've come back now. So um, they, they must have had a hidden little guy. I feel somewhat misled. Also, I've completed the Manhattan Project. Nice, so we can get some nuclear bombs going sometime soon. Are you getting really bad uh, diplomatic favor because of this insane world conquest you're going on? Because I am also getting this very bad diplomatic favor. Oh, that's amazing. You mean I'm griefing you by conquering the world? Yeah, I can't have any diplomatic favor because you're too busy winning the game. Oh, this is amazing. This is something to keep note of for when I want to troll my teammates in the future. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we've, we've been space now so I can see the entire world map. And the world map is is unique. This is meant to be Pangaea, but there's like some disconnected noodle <laughs> on the left. Yeah, we've got a very little strange nubbin of just extra land there across the Indian Ocean. Can you see the, yeah, you can see the entire world map as well now that I've discovered it, can't you? Yeah. That's great. I guess I should launch the moon landing now um, or sometime soon. If you've got a bit more gold to spare, you, I could buy a rainforest and then chop it down. Oh yeah, sure. Um, I've got like a thousand here. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, let's vote. <laughs> you get one vote, even if you have zero. Can we vote for it faster building in the industrial zone, please? Oh yeah, that's a good uh, idea. Let's uh, decrease the cost of buying units with gold. Uh, oh no, production. Production, because then we can rush them out. I'm sure it'll pass, because the AI likes voting for what we want to vote for. Yes, it has. Fantastic. Coal power plant in two turns. That's what I'm talking about. Wait, you're two turning a coal power plant? Yeah, it's only in the game, just because of uh, that. That's brilliant. And now I get to destroy the rainforest. And it's finished. There we go. I don't think anyone has ever said, I oh, know I get to destroy the rainforest with that much glee in their voice. I love destroying the rainforest. There's just something so satisfying about watching all the trees die. I, ha I have my first nuclear device, which makes me very happy. That's very good, actually. That's very good. I'll, I will be um, launching the moon landings now. The moon landings are special because it grants a one-time culture bonus equal to 10 times your science per turn. And now normally in the game, this is fantastic. However, for me, my science per turn is 20. So um, not very groundbreaking. <laughs> It'll research you like 
one ancient era <laughs> civic. <laughs> I get to discover divine right because I've gone to space. Congratulations, you can now gain a monarchy because uh, you've been to space, so you've probably able to do it. What's this? In recent news, an article revealed that Babylon has used a helicopter to clear a barbarian outpost. <laughs> <laughs> what great news! <laughs> Fantastic news for modern science. I'm actually going to probably accidentally win a tourism victory. Wait, um, because <laughs> Wait. of these, because of these relics from the heroes, I'm I'm producing like a hundred tourism. Wait, could I trade you my heroic relics as well? Oh, give me your heroic relics. Oh, give them to me if you can. That is actually quite hilarious. Take my relics, sir. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll accept both of those. Now all I need to do is spread my religion to uh, to my other city, and <laughs> then we're in uh, we're in the money. I, I just got. The um, pillaging costs only one movement promotion. I see. And so, so now, 245 I faith and 491 gold. Very nice. In a single turn. And uh, he just does that every turn. That is incredible. That's so much money. Um, I've also uh, just about spread my religion to my next city. And that's going to take my tourism up from 152 per turn uh, to a little bit more than that. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. I feel like um, we've won this game. <laughs> Basically, I think this game's over. I think this game was over in 2000, in 2000 BC. Yeah, it was kind of that, that just opening move of discovering the entire tech tree kind of tipped it over towards our balance just a little bit. I think I'm going to get a new hero now so I can just not actually use him but convert him into relics. I just It's absolutely fantastic. These just heroes exist entirely to die so we can write a story about them. Because now I make 200 tourism a turn, which is quite pleasant, I would say. I wanted a science victory, but we're going to get a tourism victory. Tourism victory by proxy, I'll accept it. Still a win. So I think this is the end of the game now, Potato. I've, apparently I'm going to get victory in 13 turns. I thought you were going to go for a world conquest in insanely fast, but no, it's culture victory time. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I don't think we really planned the, the winning part of the game. We, we just no. knew we're just going to unlock the whole tech tree. We knew something was going to happen. What it was, was a little bit open for debate as to how this game would actually finish. And you know what? This is fine. This is a lovely way to finish. Well, the good news is I have a jet fighter flying over Stockholm right now and I have a nuclear bomb. <laughs> Do, would you like to pick a city to, um, to drop this on? Yes, pick a city that you'd like to that you'd, I'd like to see die. Go for Stockholm because it's got quite a lot. Oh, I see that jet fighter there. Yeah, go for Stockholm. It's actually no, go for Uppsala because it's got the largest pop right and that will bring us closer to a culture victory. Oh, well, here comes the uh, the bomber. Um and there goes medieval Spain. It's not even medieval Spain. This is pre-medieval Spain. <laughs> These guys don't even know what uranium is. <laughs> and now they're encased in a lovely green glow. I've just noticed the military scores at the top of the screen and um, it's not looking good. <laughs> oh God, this warfare isn't fair. It's not fair at all. <laughs> I'm noticing that the, um, the Swedish city of Uppsala hasn't actually recovered. Um, at all. No, oh, do you want me to nuke it again, just to make sure? Just to make sure, yeah, if you can. If you've got one lying around, then good to go. Yeah, it'll, it'll take me two turns, hang on. Oh, look at that, they haven't repaired their city and they've put a settler in the middle of it. Very brave play there, very brave play. Yeah, I wonder if that's gonna work out for them. I'm not sure if scientifically the odds are in their favor as I'm watching a massive modern jet bomber fly over to the city. And it's not looking good for the people of Uppsala, no. I think that one might set them back a little bit further. All right, um, the moon landing's happening. Oh, it doesn't matter, we've, we've won. Oops, we won the game. Now, um, I think we did good. Ranking-wise, apparently I got Ethelfred the Unready for mine. That's 19 out of a possible 2,500. What did you get? Uh, I got Nero. I was a couple of points ahead. I think that was because I had more cities. Though. I don't really see what Caesar did better than, than we did. Honestly, like we won a we won the game before he probably even existed, was even born. Why is our score so low? <laughs> That's not fair. Is there a way to see technologies researched other than player science? Because player science doesn't really show us anything. No, we get to see cities lost um, and we get to see, this is very good. This is my personal favorite timeline that they added into the game. It's Total Religions Founded. <laughs> this is I actually checked that one. But why? It's I like, checked that hmm. one at the end of every video. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, out of a total of four religions that could be founded, four religions were founded. Mm, yes, very interesting. Mm, good.
good. I think the way to see where things went a little bit crazy is when you look at the player score graph because it, it's relatively normal, like everyone's kind of in the same level. And then there's just a straight up vertical line of when we discovered all of the technologies in the game. Anyway, I'd say um, we did great there. Um, absolutely fantastic, I'd say. That was pretty fair and balanced. Anyway, um, thanks Civ developers for this latest update in DLC and addition to the, uh, the DLC pack that you didn't give me for free and I had to pay £34 for. So um, thank you developers. And uh, yeah, this has been Potato McWhiskey and the Spiffing Brick finally doing the collaboration that 700 people asked for. Uh, actually, probably more than that, 700,000 people asked for. So if you want another collaboration where Potato and I tell you how to get a, ooh, should I say tourism victory by turn? I reckon, Potato, we could do a tourism victory by before Jesus was born. So before 0 AD, I reckon we could pull off a tourism victory. Oh, that's a very, very high bar to reach, but I'm on board. I think it's very achievable with the lovely exploit that I have planned. Anyway, this has been the lovely combo of Spiff and Potato. If you want to see more, give it a like, hop on down to the comment section and tell us if you want more of this lovely combination of an Irish person and an English person. Because Actually getting along. Actually getting along for the time being until uh, until the treaties break down yeah. and then we don't get along. All right, well, I love you all, including Spiff, and I'll sign off. All right, well, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. As always, if you enjoyed watching today, feel free to give the video a like. Do consider subscribing as well if you're new here and make sure to check out Potato's channel. I've put it in the description. He is genuinely lovely. If you want to ever get into Civilization 6 and you're struggling to learn to play the game or you just want to see how other people play it, you should really give him a watch. His editing style is very similar to mine. His humor is on point. He is a perfect and majestic sausage. Actually, he's a potato. Just go give him a watch. He's fantastic. But yes, if you want to see more Civilization 6 because we have a million more exploits thanks to this brand new update that we'd love to try out, then make sure to give this video a like. Then make sure to hop and down to the comment section and give us a shout. Equally, what video would you like to see me exploit next? A for Civ 6, B for Cyberpunk 2077, or D for Mountain Blade Bannerlord? The choice is yours. Hop on down into the description and vote. As always, a massive thank you, of course, to each and every one of our majestic patrons who make these fantastic videos all the more possible. Seriously, pat yourselves on the back, guys. You are a massive help to this channel, so thank you very much, my friends. Anyway, I will see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day, my friends, and goodbye for now. And I realize I need to do the Patreon thing.